he's easily considered one of the greatest photographers ever. Another pioneer of color photography. Someone who has traveled all over the world to create amazing images. And the man responsible for what is possibly the most well-known portrait photograph of all time. This is Street Smarts Volume 7, Steve McCurry. Steve McCurry was born in Philadelphia in 1950. His passion for photography began while he was in college taking photos for the Penn State newspaper, The Daily Collegian. Not long afterwards, photos that laid the foundation for great work to come from McCurry were taken when he snuck into Afghanistan prior to a Soviet invasion 40 years ago and snuck out with film hidden throughout his clothing taken while he was inside the conflict zone that would later be developed into photos that would appear in the New York Times and Time Magazine. Throughout his career, McCurry has covered conflict zones in the Middle East and Asia. Within these conflict zones, McCurry looks to find moments that convey the human condition experienced in war. Beyond being the recipient of many awards and having his work shown in just as many exhibitions, McCurry is associated with being the photographer of Afghan Girl, appearing regularly in National Geographic, and being a member of Magnum Photography, which he joined at the age of 36. Kodachrome was the film of choice for many of the legends of street photography who brought legitimacy to color photography in an era when it was looked down upon as a medium that lacked the artistic qualities that had become the norm for fine art photography taken in black and white. McCurry has a special connection to Kodachrome for two reasons. One being that he stated to have shot several hundred thousand pictures on the film stock. And two, because Kodak gave him the last role of the film stock that was ever produced in 2009. After receiving this role of Kodachrome, McCurry wanted to use it with intentionality. So he put his focus into what each of the 36 frames would contain, shot the role over a six week period, had it processed in 2010, and released the photos which were mostly published on Vanity Fair's website shortly thereafter in an effort to make something that felt like a proper goodbye to this beloved film stock. In regard to the project, McCurry stated, I shot it for 30 years, and I have several hundred thousand pictures on Kodachrome in my archive. I'm trying to shoot 36 pictures that act as some kind of wrap-up to mark the passing of Kodachrome. It was a wonderful film. Even with such a special connection to one film stock, and surely the production of many photos on other film stocks, since switching to digital in 2005, McCurry claims he has no nostalgia for film. The convenience of digital, the quality of the images, and its ability to shoot in low light are all reasons he does not feel compelled to shoot film anymore. In a time when many photographers are choosing to go back to film largely due to the look that it produces, and the way it forces us to take our time to get gratifying results, McCurry has said, perhaps old habits are hard to break, but my experience is that the majority of my colleagues regardless of age, have switched over. Additionally, McCurry praises digital for its ability to give the photographer the security of knowing they have the photo that they want in the moment. Because there's been several times in the past where he's taken a photo and at the moment thought, this is a really great picture, only to find out when he got home later and looked at them that they all focused on the wall in the background instead of the subject in the foreground, which he had intended to make the focus of the shot. As far as techniques Steve McCurry uses to capture his photos, a number of things come into play. If you're looking to create work like his, then his approach and philosophy on photography might be worth considering. One aspect of his approach is to avoid being weighed down by two different things, researching a place too much before you go there and bringing too much gear with you. Avoiding research will help you to avoid coming up with preconceived notions about a place before you reach that destination. It's more fun for me to discover things while I'm there, instead of going through a shopping list. In regard to gear, it will help you avoid distractions that come with having too many lenses, cameras, or film stocks to choose from. I completed a major assignment a couple weeks ago and used just a D810 and a 24 to 70 millimeter lens for the entire job. I use that lens for about 98% of my work now. When I'm walking on the street, I'll take just one body and one lens. I'll have a backup body and lens back at the hotel, just in case. In terms of photographers aspiring to create a body of work as inspiring as Steve McCurry's, he gives a few pieces of advice saying that it requires an enormous amount of time and effort. 
unless you're totally driven and obsessed about it, this may not be for you because it ends up consuming your whole life. McCurry also works with others to post-process his work and doesn't do that on his own. He's a believer in getting your work printed and put on paper to really appreciate it. Feels that it's fine to interact with people and take their portraits on the streets, but doesn't actively pursue that because he enjoys candid shots more and is a believer in color photography over black and white because it's logical to photograph the world as it is. And as far as his work is concerned, the color is integral because in the work that he does, the cultural story is in the colors. But he quantifies this by saying that in certain situations like war photography, it's good to use black and white to avoid elements that can be overwhelming or distracting. In order to capture worthwhile work, McCurry is not afraid to give advice that we can all benefit from. He encourages photographers to only shoot what they are passionate about. Be ready to take photos in unexpected times and locations. Avoid over-preparing to keep from procrastination. Work a scene until the photo you really want is taken. And to get outside of your comfort zone by engaging with people conversationally or requesting to enter their environment if a great photo could potentially be waiting there. All of the advice McCurry gives has gone into his work in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Beirut, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Tibet, the Philippines, and elsewhere. All these travels have allowed him to capture photos that are so vivid that they demand your attention. McCurry has created many impressive individual photos and larger bodies of work. What is important to my work is the individual picture. I photograph stories on assignment, and of course, they have to be put together coherently. But what matters most is that each picture stands on its own with its own place and feeling. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, keep developing.